Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we are talking all about getting customers on the route side. We're doing a little bit of a three series thing about getting customers, how to do it for each one. This week, we're doing about route window cleaning. So if you're a window cleaner at all, or getting into window cleaning, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? If it's your first time, what's up, newbie? Uh, thanks for checking us out. Hopefully, you enjoy it. Uh, there is literally hundreds and hundreds of these episodes. We come out every single week, and it's been going on for five years. So go back, watch or listen to all of them. They're anywhere podcasts are, and of course, on YouTube. Also, uh, depends on how you want to listen. But if you are one of the OGs, if you are the original cool kids, that means you watch every episode, you've thumbs up the videos, you've done all that good stuff, and you have purchased your window cleaning supplies through me, and you only use me. <laughs> well, shameless plug, I very much appreciate that is how I exist on this planet, as I am a sales rep for windowcleaner.com, the greatest and best place to get your window cleaning supplies. And I know you need supplies because you're a window cleaner. So let me put your supply order in for you. You got a guy, you got a rep, it costs you nothing extra. Shoot me a text, 862-312-2026. Let me put your orders in, it would be absolutely amazing. I get texts all night that are people like, ah, everything's in my cart, put it in. That's it, it's amazing. I put it in, it costs you nothing extra, like I said, but I get credit for it. So it's absolutely phenomenal. And if you haven't yet, which I know, I'm looking at you, if you haven't gotten your subscription yet to American Window Cleaner Magazine, it is the longest running magazine. It has been out since 1986. It got revamped about a year, almost two years ago when I bought the magazine. And uh, now it comes with sticker sheets, all custom window cleaning stickers. It has amazing articles, pictures, posters. It's just awesome. And it comes to your door like an old fashioned real magazine. So go to awcmag.com, be the ultra cool kid, the epic cool kid. Do all that stuff. Let me put your orders in and get the magazine. By the way, I see when you come in, uh, when you guys order, and it's absolutely amazing. It's like doing me the greatest favor. Uh, I want every window cleaner to have the magazine. So anyway, okay, shameless plug, over. But this week we are talking all about um getting new customers and uh we're doing that like three-part series kind of all three different versions this week is getting customers as of route route window cleaning is different than all of them they're all different right we talked about residential last week we talked about how to do it eddm mailers facebook ads all that stuff well guess what none of that works in route it just does not work in route so we have to tailor that a little bit, right? We have to uh, make it work for what it is, and it's route. Route is any type of window cleaning that you do. Uh, some people call it storefronts. But it's any type of window cleaning you do once a month or less. Once a month or more frequent. Yeah. So weekly, bi-weekly, or once every four weeks. And we'll get to weekly versus monthly in a little bit. But... It is anything done that way. So if you do a big bank and you do it every six months, it's not route. You can't build a route around something that's every six months. It has to be on a weekly schedule. So route is amazing. I really like route. There's um, a few people out there that don't like route. Maybe that's you. Uh, but route is really, really good to fill the consistency that's lacking in window cleaning. If you're a residential only window cleaner, there is lots of highs and lows. Maybe you have winter. Maybe you don't have winter, but you have monsoon season, right? Maybe you have sandstorms and haboobs, right? Maybe you have snowbirds come in. So your season's all different, but there's certain times you're busier than others. And route just kind of is. I love route because it doesn't matter if it's raining, snowing, sleeting, sanding, sunny, not. Route gets done regular if i could have a person a two you know two different uh routes three different routes whatever always running one guy in a truck but you just have them out there doing 40 hours a week 
it's regular. It's the entire year. If they can book a month, you can book a year. It's great. It's the most security. It's the most security that we have in our industry. If you're in window cleaning, you kind of get that, right? Like, you never know if it's a rain day and all of a sudden everybody cancels on you. Even though you got a rain guarantee, you're kind of twiddling your thumbs and it's just not happening. Route takes care of that. I love Route. If you haven't done it, it's awesome. The big thing, and I'm going to be 100% transparent with you right this second. If you're getting into Route, or if you're already in Route, you'll know this. But if you're getting into Route, there is a downside to Route. Route is going to be a little less per hour than uh, residential sometimes. But when you start getting into route, you will lose money. You'll lose money. And the reason is, is because when you start a route, you're going across town to do a $20 job, right? That's the truth until you build your route. Until it's a route, it's not quite as profitable. So with route, you do want to sell a ton. Sell, 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 sell. But if I can do $1,000 worth of route a month, I just booked $12,000 worth of almost guaranteed work a year, right? Multiply that, multiply that, multiply that, right? You do $1,000 a week, you got $52,000 worth of work on the books. Route's great, but you have to sell. The biggest thing you have to do is walk in. If you're doing route, you cannot do every door direct mail. You cannot send postcards. You cannot hand out flyers. You cannot, you can't do that stuff. And the reason is, is there's too many gatekeepers and they get too much of that crap. So it gets thrown away. You have to break through the noise. That's all marketing is breaking through the noise. You're going to see by the time you listen to this, this last week, you're going to see like 10,000 different ads. You don't even know you're seeing them and you're seeing them. Every time you search Google, there's five ads that pop up just in a normal like search, trying to find pizza. So you have to break through the noise. And in this part, the route, you have to break through the noise by going in. You have to walk in. You have to walk in. You have to give the spiel. You have to do kind of all that. You can't just do handing out stuff. I know guys who try to uh, mail or they will go through when all the businesses are closed at night and just like do door hangers and try it, I guess. But it doesn't yield very well because it's just something they throw away, right? If you put a door hanger on a commercial property, like a mont pa size, that may be kind of beneficial for when they walk in to see, but you don't know who it is that's seeing it, right? If a person who just happens to be the morning person opening up everything goes in first, they're the gatekeeper. They see your ad, they throw it away, Nobody of importance will ever see it. Just crazy, if you really think about it. Right? But what's the spiel? I'm going to tell you my favorite and um, go-to spiel, if that makes sense. So basically, basically, I'm trying to mute my watch here. But uh, basically, um, a spiel is kind of... It's what you say when you go in. Now you have to have something that doesn't sound scripted, right? But what you do or what I do, and I suggest if you're doing any type of route, try this. Just You could tailor it, tweak it to what you like, but try it doing it this way. See what your clothes and your uh, rates change. But I walk in. Now, as I walk through the front doors, I already see everything. I can see the windows. I can count up the panes easy, right? So as I walk in, I'm walking up, I have my clipboard with my carbonless copy forms, right? Carbon copy two-part forms or NCR forms. And I write down the name of the business. And if I can see a phone number on a window, I'll write that down. And then I write down a price for the outs. And I sign it, right? And I walk in. I go, hey, is the uh, owner and manager around? And they will say, 
either, yeah, I'm the owner or manager, or they'll say, oh, let me get them, or they'll say, no, not right now. Whatever they say, you listen. They say, no, they're not here. Oh, no, no worries. Hey, I just wanted to stop in. My name is Jersey with XYZ Window Cleaning. We're all over. You probably see our trucks here every week, but we do this place, this place, this place. I always give it a credibility, that that social uh, justification, right? Tell them what I do. And I say, I just wanted to give you guys a price you knew. Uh, I'd love to get you on the books. And I take my carbonless copy. I've already filled out with my business card, flyers, anything that I want to give them to show them they're a real company. And I slide it over. Now, I didn't ask a question. I didn't prompt anything. All I did was slide it over. So now, the only thing in a normal conversation they do is they read. They'll look at it right? With that, they're not going to always be like, oh, I love it. Let's do it, right? But what they'll do is they'll read it. Okay. And they'll do this. They'll look up at their windows. Oh, yeah. And as the the silence is there, they'll read or they'll ask questions or I'll say, um, oh, do you guys have somebody now? Almost every time because they're a store, they're going to say yes. People get discouraged. They're like, ugh. All these customers already have somebody. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they do. They're they're a business, of course, right? Yeah, they, we do. We have uh, John's. Oh, great, great. Oh, good guy. Met him a few times, actually. He's pretty awesome. Uh, well, I just want to let you know, kind of on our pricing, that's the outside only. We do the glass and the frames. We wipe everything down. No drips. We leave it all there. And the main number is my cell phone. So if you have any questions or need anything or emergency service, or even if you get egged, you just give us a call and I can get out anytime ASAP. Now what you do is you listen, right? I've given them the information, right? They know who I am. They know my pricing. They know everything. I've even put on there weekly, bi-weekly, whatever I want. And it's always weekly. I always go weekly. And I just listen. See how weird that was? Silence is weird in conversation. Silence is deafening. And you've heard it in the sales world. He who talks first loses. And that is at a pause. And a transfer of information you're reading... Well, you have to fill that. You have to fill that space, that uncomfortableness. So they do. And now your job is to just listen. And I'm going to tell you, a big part of this is not asking the wrong questions. It's not even asking questions per se. Because here's the thing in conversation, in human conversation, if you're not doing sales, if you don't understand the psychology of people, it sounds weird because you're like, yeah, I guess I get it. everything has a psychology and understanding of how 99% of things happen, right? Now, there's always that weird situation case, and I get that. If you hand something over or don't say anything, they go, oh, no, thank you. They had to go out of the comfort zone to stop you there. But if I go into a job and I walk through the door and I go, hey, my name is Jersey, and can I give you a, a, an estimate for window cleaning? There's a chance right there for no. They could say yes or no. 50-50 chance in just standards. It's even higher that they're going to say no because they already got somebody. They didn't know they needed somebody new. Right? Now, they do say yes. And to hand it over to them, and go, hey, is this, is this price the, the competitive with the price you pay? Well, now there's another answer for no, right? Now that knocks it down even farther. You see, every time you ask a yes or no question, you prompt a yes or no answer. No is a end all. No is something that people say to stop a conversation, right? You walk up to somebody, they got their arms crossed. Hey, uh, yeah, I'm here doing, uh, like to talk to somebody about roofing. No, no, thanks. Stop the conversation. I don't want to have a conversation. I don't want to talk to this big, long-winded, ah, oh, I don't want it. I don't want it. No, 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 thank you. Nope, nope, nope. It's not on my terms. Nope.
But if you don't ask the no question, they've already gotten the whole talk. Think about it this way. When the guy who, and I'm in the South and roofers here are hardcore because we get some pretty big storms. It could be roofers, it could be pest control, it could be lawn care, it could be whoever, windows, siding. The Republican or Democratic parties could be at your door, right? What's your first thing you do? If somebody cold calls you, what's the first thing you want to do? You instantly don't go, well, I should, let me hear them out. Yeah, what can I, unless you're interested or even part interested, the instantly thing you say is, oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Not interested. Thank you, but no, thank you. Nope, nope. No, 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 because you don't want to hear the spiel. But if I walk in and I already give you the spiel, everything you need to know, I've went through every possible yes or no question up until the only yes or no question that matters, and that's this, can we start service? Taking those away increases your probability of getting the job. A big part of route is you will sell to a hundred businesses to get 10, right? Maybe you're really good, your follow-up game, maybe you get 15 out of that. But it is a numbers game, especially in route. Especially in route, even more than anything else is route is a numbers game. And that's fine because they're not saying no to you anyway they're saying no to not right now i don't need your service right so you can't get discouraged for a no but it's very easy to if i don't ask no questions i won't get no responses listen more than you talk because i'm telling you as soon as you're quiet you'll hear everything you need to know if somebody calls to ask about window cleaning, they'll tell you what they want to know. If you let people talk, they'll tell you. You go to a commercial route, go to a route job. That route job, they'll tell you stuff. Yeah, um, yeah, we have, uh, we have, uh, Ted. Uh, Ted's our window cleaner, but, uh, man, I can't tell you you know, you know, Ted, he's, he's like, sometimes he's here. Sometimes he's not. I swear he takes a few months off and goes to the beach or something. I don't know where he ever is, but, uh, but he does good work. And if you, they say that to you as you're talking and you come in, well, we are the cheapest in town. You know, we are, uh, the lowest pre- where you're just doing your talk and they go, Oh, well, yeah, no, that's Ted's pretty cheap. So, all right, well, thank you. No. What they told you, if you were listening, is that Ted doesn't show up. I'm never going to throw somebody under the bus. I'm never going to say that I don't like another competitor because I don't. I like everybody. Even if I don't like them, I'm going to pretend that I do. But I'll say, oh, yeah, Ted's a good guy. He's been in the game for a really long time. I got a lot of people who uh, used him in the past. Um, But we are right as rain. We are absolutely here every single week. When your week starts... If you even do it every two weeks, we are here every two weeks regardless of weather, regardless of anything. I mean, this is what we do and we make it a point to be punctual. That is what they wanted to hear over price. They didn't want to hear about your insurance. They didn't want to hear about that you have name tags. They didn't want to hear about your anything. They didn't talk about that. What they said, if you were listening, two ears, one mouth, if you were listening, they were talking about somebody not being reliable, right? If you talk to somebody who's going, oh man, yeah, we had this guy, uh, we've had him for a really long time, but man, his his price is just killing us. I don't know, you know, um, I don't know. We might just even do it ourselves. It just, you know, it depends. It all depends. If you come in and say, Oh, yeah, I've heard of that company. Yeah, we're great. We make sure to show up all the t- They go, oh, okay. Well, he does too, right? Now, if you're listening, they didn't say anything about that. Now they're talking about price. Well, here's 
something that we can do. Instead of doing a weekly like you're doing it now, what if we did it every two weeks? That would cut your price in half and you would have a little less clean windows, but we could save you quite a bit throughout the year. Listen to what they say because they'll tell you everything they need to. The biggest complaint that people have is they have somebody. Of course they do. Of course they do. Yeah, every time. And they're like, oh, I have, you know, Steve. And I go, okay. Why would you do that? Gasoline companies still advertise their gas. And every single person who owns a car has purchased gas somewhere else. Right? You understand gas they call them convenience stores. You only shop there to the ones that are happen to be convenient to what you're doing at that exact moment, right? It's crazy when people think, they, they, they don't think about everybody who advertises that it's just a shutdown. Even if says, somebody says, hey, you know, uh, thank you for this information, but we have this uh, guy, Ted, you know, he's been doing it a really long time and we've built a really good relationship with him and uh, I'm going to pass it this time, but thank you. Oh, absolutely. Hey, I love loyalty. We love our loyal customers, so I definitely won't ever hate on that. I'm going to check back with you in uh, a month or so, and uh, we'll poke our head in, say hi, and uh, we'll keep you up. If anything changes, keep that paper around. You know, if, uh, if he's not working out or something happens where he can't service you guys, let us know. I'd love the opportunity. Okay, great. They know the conversation's ending. They're going to be super receptive. Because I said, oh, don't worry, I'll call you again in 30 days. I'll call you again in a month. Okay, no worries. No one's going to tell you don't call me. If they do, cool. Like, if they really, really don't want it. And it's happened maybe twice in, like, all of the years that we've been selling for window cleaning. That they really just don't want it. I'll take them off. I don't need to pester. I'm not going to waste my time. I'll check back with them maybe in six months or a year. Right? When that person is gone or changes or forgets about me, maybe they're having a bad day. But for the most part, they get it. And a big thing is, is that they think you'll never call them back. Because window cleaning is a kind of a bucket bobby type thing, they think you won't call them back. And that's where follow-ups come up. Follow-ups are 90%, 90 plus percent of the closes will come from follow-ups, not from on jobs. People go, man, I spent all day and I got one job. Yep, but you got a hundred names and numbers that you're going to call next week, in three days, in whatever. The follow-up is so much more important than actually going. You're just going to get the leads. Just give it a face, talk to you. I'm going to write down the person I talked to. So I go, I could talk. To, I talked to Jenny when I was there, and she said you'd take a look at it or whatever. Follow-ups are that important. Follow-ups show people that oh. Oh, yeah, let me, uh, no, you know what? I didn't actually even look at it. Let me uh, take a look at it. I'll call you back. Cool. I'll follow up again with them in two days. Hey, I talked to uh, Samantha last time. She said she was going to look in that and follow up. I didn't hear back from her yet. I just thought I'd reach out. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Because guess what? A bucket bob, somebody who's doing it for beer money is not going to follow up, but you are. You're a real company. And all of a sudden, it puts you on a whole nother level. A bucket bob, a company who comes in right off the street like, hey, hey, I'm uh, I'm passing through. Uh, can I clean your windows for five bucks? They know they'll never see that person again. It's not a company. It's just, you know, a kid asking to rake leaves. They know that as soon as they go, no, you know what? We're going to pass, but thank you. They'll never talk to that person again. They don't give them the time of day because it's not a legit company. But as soon as you come off as a legit company, they will respect and give you time. Oh my gosh, yeah, let me look at it. Uh, what is this for? You know, explain what you guys do again. They've opened the door again. Follow-ups are huge. Follow-ups are big. You have to follow up. I guarantee you, if your follow-up game is strong, get a tickler folder, right? That's like an accordion folder with 30 slots. You put it in every single day. You're calling the people that were there that you put in there. Move them every seven days. Don't let them go too long. If you go in and somebody says, oh, no, I, won't. And I say, oh, I'll catch up with you in a month. Throw it in that month so when that day comes up, you can know who you're talking to. Write notes on all the pages so you know what's going on. Right? 
What happens when you do get them? When you do get a customer, schedule it on a weekly rotation. Now, not, uh, yes, if you can get it every week, yes, do that. That is the number one best thing you need to do is every week because they have customers coming in every day of the week. You need to clean the windows every week so that they're always nice, new, clean, fresh. But I'm talking about when you do service, it's either weekly, bi-weekly, which is every two weeks, or every four weeks. Do not do monthly. Don't do monthly. Don't do bi-monthly. That's not route. People go, well, what if they say, oh, I want, you know, monthly or I want every two months. I say, I'm sorry, we don't do that. That's just way too long for it to make any sense. If they say no, A, you didn't convey your value, but some people just don't want to do it. Maybe they got somebody who's willing to do it every two months. It's not me. That's not a route. I can't build anything around that. I have to charge you like residential prices then, right? I'm telling you once this changes, yes, you're actually going to get more money every year because it's a 52-week schedule instead of once a month, which would technically be, you know, um, I think you get two extra weeks. It would be 50 weeks if it was every month. But it's actually 52 weeks because, again, some months have a little longer days, you know, weeks kind of line up. You know how that goes, right? Back in the days of when you actually got a paycheck, sometimes you get an extra paycheck in a month. That's why right? Schedule it that way and it will absolutely make more sense in your brain and your company. You'll make more money that way. I'm promising you. And if I do a job weekly, but I also do the job right next door every two weeks, well, guess what? That's how my schedule goes. Weekly, I'm there at XYZ. Every second week, I'm there at XYZ and I do their neighbor. The next week, I do XYZ the next week, I do X, Y, Z, and their neighbor, right? So you can schedule no matter what rotation they are, weekly, bi-weekly, or every four weeks on the exact same rotation. Now your calendar and your schedule and your route is stronger. Remember, your route is what makes sense. When you can get so tight that you can go and make a ton of money. If you're doing just one place, getting in a truck and driving, it doesn't make sense. You have to build that route up. That's why it's called route. And if you can, get a card on file. Hey, every time we're here, I'm always going to leave an invoice. You know we're here. We're going to say hi. Uh, Once the service is done, we just charge it. Uh, Don't even worry about it. People go, oh, you can't do a card. It is so much cheaper to pay a couple percentage on a credit card than it is to go chase the money every single time. You get paid in cash and you lose the cash. That's more fees than you'll ever pay in that job. Right? Get a card on file. They're very willing to do that. Sometimes they say till pay. I just want to pay every time you come in here. Cool. Always collect. If it's a corporate thing, that's sucky, but be on top of it. Corporate, they're going to pay you every 30 to 60 days. Uh, It sucks. If you can't get a company card, do it corporate way. Sometimes that sucks. Anyway. And now that you're there, right? You've gotten the jobs. You've done it all. You're on your weekly schedule. You're doing it all. Now it's your time to sell everything around there. Every single time. At least once a month, you should be on the route selling everything. If you're an owner operator, you should be selling everything around there every single time. Route is all about the hustle to get it. You have to get the route to make the route make sense. And here's a really, really cool thing about route. A really interesting thing is is that if I sell one job here, and there's two jobs next to it, right? But I don't do those jobs yet. I do the one job. If I pick up those other jobs, every job I pick up, that original account, I make more money on. You're like, well, how does that work? Because if it takes me 20 minutes to get in the car or my truck, drive out there, suit up, Go there, clean the windows, give them the invoice, get back in my truck, take my belt off, dump my bucket, put my stuff, get in the truck, go to the next place. Now I do three jobs. So that means all of that time consuming stuff, I only have to do once and twice, right? Once when I get there, once when I leave. On three jobs, now that entire stop, I make more money on. So now instead of making $20 and making that for... 20 minutes of work with uh, teardown and everything, 
technically, because I'm not doing that, now it's only taking me 10 minutes because I'm only cleaning the windows. I don't have to suit up, drive, all that stuff because it's getting kind of washed between all of them. We have certain areas where we park the truck and for two, three hours, we're just walking. Cleaning, next place, cleaning, next place, cleaning, next place, cleaning, next place, cross the street, next place, next place, next place, next place, then get in the truck. That's how you make big money. That's how you're still making 75 bucks a man hour on route. And it's frequent. So sell everything. Don't let the hustle drive. Don't let that fall. Because that is super important, especially in route. But anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. If you haven't already guessed with my shameless plugs that I did in the very beginning, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. And listen, I see some of you putting your own orders in. Stop it. I want to do that. I want to put all your orders in for you. That's what I do. Please let me do that. Uh, 862-312-2026 is my number. Uh, let me put your orders in. be absolutely amazing. Um, and shameless plug number two, if you haven't, Get American Window Cleaner Magazine. AWC, it's like 69 bucks, man. It's like less than an hour's worth of your work to get a year's worth of magazines. And not only does it help the industry, but I want every window cleaner to have that. It means the world to me that you guys even invest in any of this stuff or listen to any of the uh, um, content that I put out there. That's just one of them. So please do that plus don't forget awesome stickers everything else go to awcmag.com forward slash sub get your subscription do it but until next week go out there and sell some route but more importantly go out there and be epic